Today we're going to explore a number 1A orthographic Kodak Junior, a folding camera from the First World War. The Great War was the first conflict to be thoroughly photographed by the men and women taking part. In 1915, when this camera was made and sold, the methods of mass production that had made the 1A orthographic Kodak available for a little over the average worker's weekly wage were now causing mayhem and destruction throughout the world. But this time it could be photographed and shared by the people in the eye of the storm, and the horrors of war were being laid bare on silver emulsion for all to see. So we don't know much about this particular camera. We know it's 105 years old, and we know there's an identical camera to it in the Imperial War Museum, which was used by a Royal Signal Corps member over in Mesopotamia. These cameras were going a little bit out of fashion by the First World War, and were largely being replaced by the Vest pocket cameras. Because although this is technically a pocket camera, you need a big pocket still for it. So if you're going to war, you might want something a little bit smaller. It's an orthographic camera, which was hailed as the next great thing in photography, but it wasn't very popular and it was disbanded in the mid-twenties. What it is, is the film has a sheet of carbon paper between the film and the paper backing. And you have a window, let's see if I can do this for you. So you would pop this down and you have a stylus. This one's a little bit rusty, but a lot of these cameras are missing their styluses. And in between shots, you would press very firmly and you would mark the carbon paper and you would write in the lines between the images. And then when you'd written your piece, you pop it back in, pop your clip up and move on. On the front, you've got the Kodak ball bearing shutter, which is a slightly more advanced version of the shutter we had on the Kodak Model D. You can do a hundredth of a second, fiftieth of a second, twenty-fifth of a second, um, bulb and a time exposure, which is very useful. On the bottom, you've got the normal Kodak 1 to 4 for your aperture, f11, f16, f22, and f32. I think we never completely confirmed that, but if you meter to that, the camera will work for you just fine. You've also got the wonderful, brilliant viewfinder, which folds away but can be used in landscape mode and in portrait mode, it's very useful. You look down in it like this. You can also focus this camera, which you couldn't do on the other one, by simply moving this backwards and forwards. You have a little tooth that engages for various different distances, which are marked on the side there, which is very useful. If we take the camera apart, take the back off it, it's all fairly self-explanatory in here. You've got the very large panoramic area, which is great. And then you've got the film take up. Now, we can't get the film for this anymore. So we've got a couple of printed bits and pieces. So I've printed out some spaces for the film itself. Little bit of blue tack goes a long way on these. And you're going to pop them in. There we go, that's in. So that's how you get your film in, and then you run it over onto the take-up spool. Now, I 3D printed a couple of gate masks. So you'd slip this in, slip your, pil your, pil slip your film over, <clears throat> put it all together, and you've got your camera. Sadly, when testing out the camera, the shutter seized up, so I took it apart. So to take the shutter on this camera apart, you must first remove the lens and then the ring that holds the shutter onto the bellows. Then find the thinnest flathead screwdriver in captivity and carefully remove the shutter's outer housing. On the front of the shutter is the ball bearing and spacer mechanism. On the other side is the shutter. The shutter works by using a sliding lever whose starting position and so travel time changes with each selected shutter time. I found that the shutter blades mechanism was sticking. Short of time, I used the hooligans approach and soaked it in WD-40. In the short term, it worked, but it was the vandals approach, which I knew was going to have consequences later on. I just didn't know when.
since it was a World War I era camera, we dressed Jamie up in the period and put her in a field of poppies. The button to open it up is hidden. So it's just covered over. So it's here and you pop it up like that and you pull it out like that. I do feel a bit like I'm in a Hayao Miyazaki film. One, two. Once again, shooting 120 in a 116 camera had me counting turns. If you want to know more about counting turns, check out the Modern Photographer Tries 1909 Kodak Model D video. Awesome. So to focus this camera, we've got these little marks here. So that's in feet on this side and meters on this side. Can you do a Julie Andrews spin? Right here, I actually have some space. Yeah. I can do that. <laughs> One, two, three, go. That's nice. One, two, three. I don't think the shutter's working. The shutter's broken again. Is there a way to shoot yeah. it? Or no, that there, there, the isn't, there isn't. There um, isn't. Thoughts? Okay, well, we'll go home, develop them, and see what we've got. I was sad not to finish that roll on the Kodak, but my brief chance to put colour film through this old camera made the people in those old pictures feel real, even for just a fleeting moment. So that was the number 1A orthographic Kodak Junior. They're so imaginatively named, these, these old Kodaks, aren't they? Um, yeah. If you want to share your experiences with these old cameras, you can do so in the comments below. If you'd like to share some of your photographs or if you have a suggestion for a camera you'd like me to use, you can do so on the Ollitography Facebook group. There are now five or six of these old camera videos, so they should be popping up here or here, so you can keep watching them. And otherwise, show the love, keep growing the channel, and I'll see you in the next video.